Hey everyone, welcome. I'm JB Hoovener, and you made it to the Bold Today Show, where you, the entrepreneur, inventor, or business owner, can ask live questions of me, a patent attorney and owner here at Bold Patents Law Firm, about anything about the patent, copyright, trademark, or trade secret process, or anything you're just thinking about with respect to bringing your technology or new innovation to market. I'm going to be with you for a half hour, and we're here every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific and noon on the East Coast. Uh, just for you. All right. Uh, so I'm happy to uh, to bring on my co-host here, Matt Colseth. He's with me here every week. Mr. Loyal. Matt, welcome to the program. Hey, JD. Hey, everyone. Hope you're having a great day. Doing good, man. You can see the sun coming in. I'm feeling an early spring. I mean, I, I know Punxsutawney was saying more winter, but I have to disagree. I'm seeing more more sun. Is the sun out in, in Minnesota? Uh, no, it is not. It is cold and miserable and terribly depressing. Oh, well, let me, yeah, I'll just, I'll try to just bring in a little more light for you. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to shine some in. Matt, I'm so glad you joined. I was going to be lonely this morning. Uh, no, without, no. I, 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 okay. I'm here. Good. Um, although what's sad, a little bit sad, uh, on the avo.com, no trademark questions. I'm almost oh. always loaded down with oh, trademark just... questions. So, Three patent questions, but we'll have to have you chime in uh, as you do normally with with your answers there, you know, as we sure. talk about trademark issues. Um, so for those that don't know, Matt, Matt Colseth is our go-to trademark attorney here at Bold. Um, he's been with me here for a long time. Uh, and I'm J.D. Hoovener, owner here at Bold Patents Law Firm. Um, you know, you know, we're Bold Patents, of course, we do trademarks too. So we're happy to talk both of those subjects. Um, yeah, so for today, and, and please bring in those live questions. Um, know that by, by virtue of you joining this live broadcast, we're not your attorneys uh, yet, okay? We'd love to welcome that opportunity. And so please do check us out at boldip.com and um, click this link if you're ready to schedule a free screening session um, where we're gonna see if we're both a good fit for each other. Okay, so there's that link for you. Um, the topic of today, today is crypto, NFTs, patents and trademarks. So kind of a swath of stuff. I think a lot of people have heard about crypto, okay? It's not a new thing anymore, I don't think. Um, cryptocurrencies and, um, you know, NFTs. NFTs, I think, are a little more current, you know, more new, I would say. Um, I'm still kind of coming up to speed on what those things are. Um, the, you know, my interpretation and I went to CES, Consumer Electronics Show, and like sat down at a booth with multiple vendors and like, what is an NFT? I mean, I just really bothered them and made them just answer all my questions. Um, and so I, I think now I can finally say I have a glimpse of what they are. Um, and, it's, and it's artwork, artwork that is tokenized for sale. Digital artwork being sold sometimes to many people. <laughs> yeah, Matt, I think I think you I think you crushed it. I think that's it. Yes. Okay. My trip was not for naught. Yeah. That's it. it. It seems like that's what it is. So I came out of that like, hmm, that's kind of cool. I mean, go artists. It, I love artists, um, and so. Many well, you, you are you are an artist. I don't know if everyone knows that, but Jamie's a painter. Holy cow. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to out you as an artist. Okay. I appreciate that. Absolutely. I do. I do paint abstract. Um, if you want to check out my stuff, I'll send a link out here if I can find one. I appreciate that. You know, anyway, yeah. So, but art, art, so it's digital art and it really can take any form. Um, and it's just the idea that you can, you as an individual, can can on the blockchain you know blockchain is this uh, you know multiple computer node verified network right with sort of a decentralized way of verifying data on the internet which i think is cool it's an it's an amazing thing um to where there's no like you know one company or one government that, that sort of advise you know creates it or owns it the whole network is owned by everyone so um the idea that you can um put it on on this ledger that forever you're an owner, you may make a, like a claim on this art. Um, and we're going back and forth talking about this with our legal team about copyrights, you know, and how that sort of comports or doesn't. And I think they're completely separate. 
yin yang. They're totally separate, right? So like these these notes I took, I'm, I don't know how proprietary they are, okay? I doodle a lot, all right? I doodle. I have a copyright on this. You, Matt, and anyone listening or watching, you do not have my approval <laughs> to reproduce. You might have done it. You might have done a screen grab. It might have been really quick, and you did a screen grab. You do not have my permission to duplicate, make copies, sell. Right? I own a copyright in that, and I could register that. That's true. Um, but if someone did take a screen grab, I'll do it again. If someone wants to, just for fun. Okay, do a screen grab. <laughs> you you can make that an nft you can make that picture an nft and you could sell that on the open market and i even if i were to go to library of congress and get a registration for that for my notes um and doodles i could not i don't believe a judge would be able to prevent you from selling that nft i would like them to but I'm hmm. waiting for that court case to happen. That's interesting. Right? Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. Is, is an NFT a derivative work of the original, right? Yeah, it's the same. I mean, you know, you and I right here on this podcast, someone could take a screen grab picture and, 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 um, and sell it. JD, I don't think it'd be worth much. <laughs> no, you're wrong. You're so wrong. <laughs> Maybe picture you. Oh man, you're 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 buttering me up. This is awesome. I know. My, my I know. birthday is coming up. Uh, March hey, 8th, happy birthday. Um, when's your birthday? You should know. June. Oh, June first. Okay. All right, I'm waking yeah. up. Okay. Uh, so okay. I know I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but um, we're talking copyright a little bit. Um, you know, any implication on trademark side that you sort of smell with kind of that that uh, that the sort yeah. of scenario that I I laid out. Yes. I mean, so, I mean, just generally speaking, I mean, NFTs, digital currency, these are big topics in trademark law right now. Um, we've got a lot of clients interested in, we've applied for, registered a number of trademarks for clients, for NFTs, for digital currency, crypto. Um, it's a big kind of trending thing that we're seeing. There's always trends in, in trademark law. Um, digital currency, NFTs are, are certainly like in the last year or two. It's been a, a more and more of a conversation piece. Um, right. So from a registration perspective, yes, we can certainly register them as trademarks um, if they are being used um, you know, as digital currency or if the company is using the name to provide some sort of financial services, maybe like a trading platform to purchase them. Um, you know, class nine is the product, the actual, you know, Bitcoin NFT that you, you know, can't hold in your hand, but it's still a property. Right, the digital yep. property um, that you can own and download. Right, um, yep. there's a file somewhere, and then there's the financial services, which is class 36. Um, so, from a registration perspective, yeah, you certainly can. It is important to register these from a trademark standpoint um, because they do act as trade trademarks. They are source indicators for a product and for a service. You know, namely the product itself, the currency, uh, and then second, the the trading the purchase, you know, um, the selling of that currency. So we certainly encourage clients to register in multiple classes when we have a client that's, that's entering this marketplace. Okay. And let's just, you know, I'm, I'm big on examples. So we got, I'm not up. going crazy. I'm not going to go, I'm going to keep it real even, but okay. So Ethereum, have you heard of Ethereum? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. It, it, it's sort of second to Bitcoin from what yep. I understand. Okay, so, okay, is that a company? Is there, a, or is that the coin name? Do you not to know? Ooh, ooh, I, I, I believe it's both, isn't it? So it's both. Okay. You know, I, I bet it's Ethereum is probably the company name. It's the, you know, the business. Maybe it's Ethereum LLC. Maybe it's Ethereum Corp. I, I don't know, but it could be. Okay. It could be the brand for the currency. It could be the product. And it could Got be it. the website where you go to purchase that product. So okay. it could be all three. It doesn't yeah, have to and be I'm actually player. on there. Yeah, this is, this is going to be over our head, I think, Matt. I mean, and okay. I'm, I did a quick, no, I mean, I just a quick Google, ethereum.org, on-chain versus off-chain governance, uh, DAOs, mm. right? Um, we're we're going to need somebody from the audience maybe to help us. But I, okay, so maybe that's not, not a good example. Um, 
if you're willing to share maybe some of the clients you've had, I mean, um, what kinds of companies are there and, and what do they sell? Maybe can you so, think of any generic examples? Yeah. Um, Dogecoin, I mean, that's not a client of ours, but Dogecoin is kind of what people have come to, um, you know, look to, you know, as an example of like how you can make a lot of money selling digital currency or NFTs. Um, you know, I have a lot of clients talking about, you know, wanting to do something like Dogecoin, right? They want to create their own um, currency. They want to create, you know, separately, maybe an NFT that they sell. Um, and it, what's interesting about it is that they're creating the this art typically, you know, from whole cloth with the explicit purpose of selling it as a digital currency. Now, there's no inherent necessarily worth in the artwork itself. I mean, before NFTs, there was no audience for this, right? But the right. market is such, and people are bullish enough about NFTs that they're they're wanting to invest in, you know, quite frankly, w which could be a, a big gamble, right? Because these products inherently have no value until the market deems them worthy of having a value. And right now, that marketplace is very speculative. Got um, it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, so I'm looking at the Dogecoin, the quick Wikipedia, you know, the source of all information, Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> Billy Marcus, right? Jackson Palmer. These are two actual human beings, software engineers that created this, right? And they own, and, and I believe Billy Marcus is the one that owns it. An actual individual owns that company. Um, and they have a, and so what they're selling is a digital currency. And as you said, the value fluctuates based on how the market perceives it. Um, if someone was gonna go file a trademark for Dogecoin. Yeah. Um, um, you mentioned the two classes. I think it was nine and thirty-six. Yep. Um, class, you know, go, you know, to what I'm used to hit providing evidence. Talk to me. What kind of evidence of use in commerce? What does that look like? And have you seen that? Seen those uh, examiners be picky about uh, evidence of use in commerce when it's non-dollar? Transaction. Yeah, no, that, that's a good question. I haven't seen them being too particularly picky about it. And that makes sense because it's new. There, There's no specific guidelines at the USPTO for what constitutes a good specimen um, necessarily. And so the examiners are probably working, you know, on the assumption that this is it based on what was provided by the attorney of record. Um, but for the most part, they're going to be websites. You know, they're going to be a website where the product is, you know, you, know, you can purchase it, right? Yeah. You can purchase it, download it, right? That's going to be a requirement. There's going to be um, a purchase mechanism. There's going to be um, a, a shopping cart icon on the website. Um, yeah. That's going to be both for the, the the services and probably the product, assuming that the product has the trademark on it or used in association with it. So uh, the picture itself will include the brand. Um, that people are purchasing or the artwork will include the brand that people are purchasing or it'll be used in close approximation to the product itself. Okay. So some but, of maybe yeah, websites are 90% yeah. of what specimens are these days. Okay. It's Website, not like it actual, was 10 yeah. years ago where, you know, you were potentially like mailing a pamphlet into the USPTO, <laughs> you okay. know, like, um, you know, for a trade show or like uh, taking a picture of the outside of a business, right. And submitting that as your proof of use that, you have a physical location. It, now, nowadays, it's typically a website. Website, okay. Um, and so someone starting out, maybe watching this show three months from now, and they want to start up their own coin, um, and they want to um, you know, get trademark protection, um, you're saying they just need to start a website and be able to be offering the coin for, for sale? Um, yeah. Is that gonna be sufficient? That's gonna be sufficient from a trademark standpoint. And obviously like we'd wanna make sure that the brand that they're hoping to go to market with and sell, ultimately they can protect. Um, I think you're probably aware, you know, I, I'm not fully aware of this, but there is a whole bunch of securities exchange um, actions going on right now around digital currency and NFTs and how do we regulate, how do we tax this and how do we track this? There, the space is really, um, uh, I guess volatile in the sense that nobody's really gotten there, especially the government has not fully gotten their head around how we um, control or regulate this marketplace, right? So um, I expect that you know you would certainly want to have an attorney who's versed in 
not just the trademark aspects of this, but maybe another attorney who is a securities attorney who can kind of get you through the process of, you know, what you have to offer and, you know, um, what the value is to the potential client that you're selling the product to, right? Uh, because yep. there has to be value, right? If you're going to get something, you better give something in exchange, right? And what are you giving them that's worth value, right? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. And I, I'll just put a quick plug in for patents. I mean, we have um, four or five attorneys that have done blockchain related patents. Um, you know, as many of you guys know, I don't actually work uh, with clients one on one. I'm more at the marketing uh, ownership level and do more networking and things like this. Um, but it's like they, they're in the weeds. They understand what's happening. So if you've got if you've invented something, right, if you've actually solved a problem, um, come up with a, a way of transacting cryptocurrencies, uh, enforcing um you know contracts right smart contracts there's all sorts of different nuances with respect to mm -hmm. how transactions get reported on the ledger how software talks to one another how different things are implemented on the blockchain you should look into patent protection and we could we could have you sit down and work with one of our attorneys to do a patent search to look at is, is the first is this actually new is what you come up with your solution new uh, is it non-obvious and is it large enough is it really a big enough opportunity to go for it and file a patent application because there are certainly uh, patents out there with with this sort of technology, and if you can get it, I mean, it'd be huge, right? So I think it's worthwhile for anyone that's got something that they think is a, a unique solution to explore patentability. Um, and I always in my my all my talks, I always encourage you to do that research before going to market. You know what you don't want to do is have basically open yourself up to copycats, um, bigger entities, deeper pockets that can just rip you off and kind of swamp you out, right? If you're not going to lock down your technology with a patent, you're going to be in trouble. Um, and so I think it's, you know, before you sort of launch the website and start offering, um, do your diligence and research the patentability. Also check on that, as Matt said, uh, make sure you're not going to be potentially, you know, um, naming your business or you know, naming, you know, starting your, off on the wrong foot with your brand and um, having the same mark or confusingly similar mark as someone else. Yeah. And I guess from a trademark perspective, I'm just <clears throat> thinking through the implications of having trademark issues with an NFT or digital yeah. currency, right? So let's say you go to market with a brand. Um, you come to Bold Pat Patents, you know, Bold IP, and we, we try to work, register the trademark. And let's just say, you know, during the process, you know, we're denied registration at the USPTO. Well, that's a problem potentially, right? From yep. a copycat yeah. perspective. Um, what value are we giving to someone if you're selling an NFT that can't be protected, right? Yeah. From a trademark yeah. perspective. Yeah. And then what happens if someone sues you for infringement, right? And part of that, you know, that um, complaint is asking you basically to return the intellectual property of the, the plaintiff, right? Yeah. Do you have to go right. back and all of a sudden purchase back all the NFTs? Oh, Wow. And, and if so, like, what happens if those NFTs in the, you know, the five-year period this is going on, you know, skyrocket in value, right? I mean. Yeah. Damages go way up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, had, I, well, hadn't, I hadn't really considered that, to be totally honest. But, right? yeah. That, okay, that here's, here's the thing. Yeah, and this may be part of what you're talking about. So I, I, I went ahead and um, took a bold, bold action, right? Coming out of CES, I'm going to go ahead and show – Everybody, what I've been doing on OpenSea. OpenSea is where you can list NFTs. And I'm not saying this is bad. I'm just saying that this is something that is uncomfortable and I'm trying. Okay, so Bold Patents. Can you see this, Matt? Yes. We have launched the Bold Patents Granted Collection. Ooh. Now, it's not listed for sale but I've created six NFTs. Here's NFT one. And it's, oh, this is that's, that's five. Okay, let me go back to NFT one. I created five or six. Oh boy, where's, I don't know where one is. That's okay, let's see if I can find it. I think this is it. Here we go. Okay, the first. And this is the cover sheet. It's a one page, this is an image, all right? Now, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office publishes patents, okay, in the official gazette, okay? Uh -huh. And 
we helped this inventor, this is a client of ours, Gabriel De La Vega, this is public information. And here, our, our attorney is Christopher Maley, and here's my name. I go by J. Debo, and your name is John. And here's Bold IP, right? We helped make this patent come to life. And so we're wanting to show this off. This is an image, and we put a, our QR code here. So if you hold your phone, your camera now, most cameras will are smart enough to pick that up, and all that is is a link to our website. But I, I, this is a this is just an image. It's a static image. It's awesome. I'm proud of it. Proud for our client. Happy for them. And so I'm just sort of. I, I think you know, this is the NFC I, that I've created. So, um, am I crazy? What do you think? Is that silly? Are you worried about bold? Are you worried about what we're doing? Would you be concerned if one of your clients just did that? No, I mean, I, I don't think so. Um, again, um, I'm not a securities and exchange attorney, so I don't know what the new regulations around NFTs, NFCs will be, but um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know what the value of that is in terms of, you know, money, right. but I, I don't, I certainly don't see any trademark implications or copyright issues. Um, yeah. I thought, I thought maybe the USPTO could come after me. Um, you know, hey, we, we published that in our gazette. It's public information. I, I don't know. So it's like if I want to go print off it, it to me, what, what I talk about internally is it's the same as if I were to print off a patent using ink paper and go, OK, I'm going to staple it and I'm going to go sell this piece of these five pieces of paper next door to my neighbor. I'm going to go knock on the door. Do you want to buy this for five dollars? It's a stack of pa paper. It's public information. So that's that I'm kind of like, OK, I'm going to give it a shot. And that's kind of where NFTs are at, it's in this weird space. Like you're creating this thing out of nothing. And if somebody sees value in it, great. What I was going to do actually is offer um, to just give that for free to our client when they get their patent granted to have them just be a part of something cool. And um, you know, we're at kind of this precipice where this is this could be really big in terms of like a, like a new internet kind of thing. And we're at the kind of very beginning stages. It's yeah. like the internet, the internet in like 1991, <laughs> 1992. <laughs> So I'm just trying to be part of the movement. Um, yeah, no, and I think that's that's really cool. And that's what I love about technology and entrepreneurship is that, you know, you're, we're constantly seeing new things come. And I think, JD, you, you and I both have, like, the honor of working with people who are on the cutting edge of technology as technologists. Yeah. Yeah. And we're seeing the future maybe a few years before it happens. Yeah. Um, you know, I know that I right now I'm working with a few clients who have some really amazing ideas, you know, stuff that's blowing my mind. And obviously they're working on the patent side of it too, but um, I don't imagine a lot of that technology we will see in the next year or two potentially, but I mean, it's coming. And when it comes, yeah. it's going to change the world, right? Absolutely. Love it. Well, let's get to a few of these questions here on Avo. Um, and we'll, we'll keep you on because I think there may, there almost always is crossover. Um, nine minutes, seven minutes left here. This question's out of Chicago, Illinois. And I'll bring it up here. Multi-part question. Again, we welcome any live questions for anybody uh, that's on. Um, I'm JD Hoopner, owner here at Bold Patent Law Firm. We got Matt Colesath, trademark attorney, on as well. Uh, we're fielding those questions. So here's this one. I'll put it up to Facebook. So a company was granted a patent that failed to disclose relevant prior art that invalidates it. Um, ooh, would this hold up in an ex parte? A competitor was just granted a utility patent that would speed up their manufacturing. In my opinion, the patent is obvious. 20 persons to go in the art because of its simple A plus B. Furthermore, I found multiple instances of prior art that would invalidate the patent, which is the reason I never submitted an application beforehand. Okay, okay. You know, I think I can, I can kind of see where this is going. Um, hey, examiners make mistakes all the time <clears throat> and they can miss stuff. They're human. I mean, they use amazing array of technology that, that at their fingertips to do um, a high, high quality search. But it's always possible that they miss something. Um, and it's totally true that a patent could be granted um, and that there was prior art that, that pre existed. And so there are definitely ways um, through ex parte. Um, you can also do an IPR, inter partes review, where you have both parties there. Um, and what you do is you can bring, you have to petition to make that happen. Uh, it's like a little mini court case. That, and what happened as part of the AIA, the American Invents Act, starting in 2013, is they created a whole panel 
of judges that all they do all day long is look at patent cases. So they're very efficient at doing patent work. Whereas if you go to any old district court, they're seeing like criminal, they're seeing white collar crime. It's really a, a crapshoot. So it's been a great advent, a much more efficient uh, docket. Um, and they look at these cases and they'll say, yeah, actually what you provided us it has merit, let's have the case, you know, and you can bring forward 102, which is um, novelty, meaning you can prove that, hey, this actually wasn't new, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, examiner, you might have missed this, sorry, um, we need to invalidate it. Or you can show novelty, or sorry, non-obviousness, which is what I believe this person was asking. And you can say, oh, look, this was obvious to try, and here's evidence that someone already mentioned that you could have done it. No one had actually done it yet. So both of those are, are both, um, both of them are, are um, valid uh, means to, to start a um, post-grant proceed. And so that's just the general category of after patents granted, it's not safe, okay? You have, and that's part of the, you know, the diligence that your patent attorney has to do um, in, in impressing upon the inventor that they are obligated to provide all information that they know that's public, right? Competitors and you know, detailed information about where they came up with the invention, uh, they're obligated, so they, they sign an oath saying, yes, I provided everything I know about this invention. We did a search. Here's our results, Mr. and Mrs. Examiner. And that's what you have to provide to them before you move forward. Um, and so, you know, in this case, it almost kind of alluded to the fact that maybe the applicant, the inventor, knew about something but didn't provide it. Well, that would even rise to the level of a fraud, right? Um, knowing and willful withholding information that could really be an, uh, a major concern for the applicant and, and the inventor. And if the attorney knew, whoops, now we're talking about malpractice. So um, the slippery road, be definitely something that you've got something there. Um, and it, again, it would depend on how solid that evidence is. Hey, that, do you need a uh, quick question for you to follow up? I know we don't have a ton of time. Is there a timeline when um, someone would need to bring um, a claim against a, a granted patent? You know, in trademark law, we, we like yeah. to see it earlier rather than later. After five years, it becomes much more difficult to cancel a trademark registration. Do you have something yeah. like that in, in patent law? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. And, and this is sort of like patent bar question. Yeah. Um, don't quote me. I believe it's within a year, a year of grant. You, you have to bring it forward. So if more than a year has gone by, it gets really challenging, if not impossible, to bring a claim. Uh, so... Thank you for that, Matt. I appreciate that. And then again, those rules, I don't have memorized anymore, um, and, but I, I know there are time restrictions. You can't, you know, on a patent that's been around for, for three, four or five years, go try to invalidate that. Um, but uh, there, are, there are some proceedings that will allow you to go up to a year, okay, after, mm -hmm. after, after grant, okay? Um, so let's go to next question. That was a good one. All right, this one is, how do I start the patent process? Okay, how do I start the patent process? I have an idea for an electronic device. So, uh, so far after spending hours on the internet, I've not found a similar one. Uh, I'd like to get a consultation and start the process to register the IP and patent the idea. Um, I'm looking for a lawyer to get legal advice to whom they'll introduce me to an organization to start a prototype or at least make a design. It's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Check, uh, check out the link I just provided up above. Um, finding a good trusted legal advisor is the best step, right? We're going to give you that opinion on patentability um, to, you know, make sure you have a good foundation on whether you should proceed or not. Um, you know, ideas, right, you know, are, are relatively common, unfortunately, but what you, what you want to move forward with is an invention. So if you've got it through, thought through well enough, and you've got it to the point towards an invention and you can explain it to us, um, your you know, potential patent attorney, then we can help do a really good search um, on that invention to see if it's been done before or if, it's, if an obvious version is already out there. Uh, and hopefully it is not, right? And we get you your patent moving forward, filed and protected. Um, and absolutely, once you start working with a firm like ours, we don't stop with just the patent. I've made it my main focus to surround myself with a lot of professionals and experts, including designers, manufacturers that I know personally and I would, we would recommend to you. Um, so you're not going to be alone on this struggle. I even wrote a book about it. You're not alone right behind me. So I mean, if you want to get a copy of that, I could send that to you. As an entrepreneur, I know it can seem lonely, right? It's a lot of work. Everything rests on your shoulders. Um, but trusting professionals is the way to go, right? Honing in on what you do, what your special craft is, 
that's I, when my, my belief is that's how you're going to be able to excel and be successful is uh, investing in what, you, what your strengths are and relying and trusting on others to help you along the way. Um, so cool. Matt, that's a wrap. We covered a lot. Um, thanks for being on the show today. Of course. It was a pleasure. And uh, yeah, great questions today and a fun topic. Yeah, for sure. Well, cool, man. We'll see you next week. Have a good one. Take care, everybody. Go, you too. Go big, go bold.